Welcome back! So we've gotten the Nikon, and now we're going to look for clues on the first floor. As soon as I can get myself oriented properly, we will start. Let's see, we've got a seismograph here, it looks like. And I can't turn to go to it, so we'll just do this. Wait. Oh hey! Oh hey, Bill. What's shaking? I was just borrowing some hardware from the old Morph Master here. Might help me hack into Max. Ah. Yep, this baby ought to do it. Go ahead and shift the geologic gear and make this puppy rumble. Well, how do I know it's going to work now that you've taken that thing out of it? I, uh, let's just see how we work this thing. Huh? If the Morph Master 5000 can model the Earth's geologic processes, that is, show the changes the planet goes through as it grows. Of course, this baby does it much faster than the Earth. Check out the controls. There's a monitor with photos of real-world geological sites, a keypad, a gear shift, and of course, the button that gets me going, <laughs> the go button. Okay, then. You can select a real site and see what forces shaped it. Just choose a photo, enter the correct code numbers, then press the go button. Or you can just shift the gears and watch the Morph Master morph. Okay, that's how we work it. Ugh. Now, what's cool Earth's about it? crust is cool, which is good. Because if it were hot, like the inside of the Earth, we'd all be walking around like this. Every day would be a game of the floor is lava. <clears throat> anyway, the Earth's crust is broken up into huge slabs we call plates. Now, the plates move because of convection beneath the Earth's surface. That's when hot blobs of rock get pushed up, and they push the tectonic plates around. Check it out! Alrighty, science lesson behind us. Let's get morphin'. I'd say it's morphin' time, but becoming a Power Ranger probably isn't necessary here. Alright, let's type in the code for the highway bridge in Costa Rica here, and we'll see what happens. Wow! Two blocks slide on top of this orange jello and make a ripple. I wonder what that means. Cool. Sometimes two of the Earth's plates slide along each other. But you can't blame me, because it's not my fault. No, it's an Earth's fault. <laughs> we get it, Bill. It's wild. Pieces of the planet are actually moving against each other, causing waves of energy to move right through the ground. Probably doesn't look like what happens when you throw a stone in the water, but it helps illustrate the effect. Alright, next up, Halawela Province, also in Costa Rica. And type, whoops, I'm gonna clear it first. Okay, three, seven, zero, zero, five, two. And that's a volcano right there. What do you have to say about it, Bill? In some places, one of the Earth's plates will push down underneath another plate. The plate that goes under gets heated up. Then it becomes hot, even melted rock, which can push to the surface to make volcanoes. Geysers! Or my favorite, hot springs. I think this is called a subduction zone. Yeah. And that last one was a transform boundary? No. No, I think it is a transform boundary. I need to look that up again. Then this is Mount Makapukur. I don't know how to pronounce that. It's in Nepal. Let's see what happens. And that's how mountains are made. One of the ways, anyway. Cool. Not good enough for a video, Bill? Okay. Just like when you're washing dishes, sometimes the Earth's plates push against each other. But instead of breaking, these plates crumple up, creating mountain ranges. And that's cool. I'm glad I don't have to wash the Earth's plates. Well, it'd probably take you millions of years to completely wash the Earth's plates, Bill. So I think everybody would be glad not to have to carry out such a task. And now we have the Juan de Fuca Bridge in the Pacific Ocean. Let's see what we got here. Oh, 
spreading center now, huh? Cool. And Bill can't be bothered to explain it in video form. Okay. The Earth's plates are constantly moving, at about the same rate as your fingernails grow. Sometimes these plates spread apart. We call that a spreading center. As the plates spread apart, hot rock from inside the Earth wells up at these underwater joints to make new crust. If the spreading plates are above ground, they can form huge valleys, like the Great Rift Valley in Africa. If the spreading plates are underwater, then along with tons of hot crust welling up, huge amounts of chemicals and bacteria end up on the Earth's crust, and those can act as nutrients to living things. Now, didn't one of the riddles say something about heat and life or something? It was this one. Okay, I think we've got ourselves a clue here. Because if there's heat there and there's bacteria acting as nutrients to living things, Bill says, now that's some hot pressure. When these plates spread apart, hot lava wells up to fill the gap. There's lots of pressure that deep in the ocean, too. I think you're getting warmer. Okay, so where that riddle is concerned, we're headed in the right direction towards an answer. What site is next here? The San Andreas Fault in California. I think you know now where the character Sam Andreas got his name. And it's another one of those fault places. Okay, we already saw that. Okay, I think we're done with this thing. Let's move on back over here. Hey! What's shaking? Just you in front of a camera, Bill. Well, I really find out, the tectonics lab is the place. Here you can measure earthquakes with the Nismograph. Oh, it's the Nismograph. Because we need to have Bill's surname in there whenever possible. Then there's the fault finder. Which isn't cool enough to have its name said out loud. stations from around the world, where you can get data to pinpoint a quake. The tectonics lab... Shakes! You could have just said it's cool or it's wild, Bill. Don't need to put shakiness into everything. Huh? When an earthquake happens, it sends vibrations out through the Earth. Well, the earth there's a visualization we haven't seen three waves. times already. The Nismograph can sense these vibrations, and that jiggles a pen which records the wave on the paper. That's the sign of an earthquake passing by. After a quake happens, you can use the sliding bars to measure how far away it was. If you think that's cool, press the cool button and I'll tell you how. Well, I guess I better push the cool button now. I need to learn how to use cool. this thing, I think. Earthquakes? Shake! I think you've established that, that fact pretty well changing. now, Bill. When an earthquake happens, it releases a huge amount of energy. No, no. No, a, a tremendously huge amount of energy. Now, this energy moves out from the earthquake in two different kinds of waves. First, there are primary waves, or pressure waves, called P waves. Hey, I've first. made P waves like before. This. They don't look like that, though. Then there are secondary, or shear waves, called S waves, which take a little longer to show up. They look like this. Hmm, the so S waves are bigger than the P the waves. Spot. Good to know. You can tell how far away the quake was by measuring the gap between the waves. If anybody knows the math behind this, please let me know. I'd like to be able to see an example of this. It's like counting the seconds between a lightning strike and the sound of its thunder. The Nismograph can barely measure this one. It's, it's the bill wave. That joke was bad and you should feel bad. Then again, I'm not one to talk with the jokes I've just made. Alrighty, on to the fault finder now. Huh? The fault finder will help you locate any earthquakes throughout... The entire world! <laughs> or you can look at great quakes through history! You sure you wouldn't have preferred a career as a WWE announcer, Bill? You seem to like shouting names. Point the epicenter using circles. Or you can make a milkshake! <laughs> How did that button get there? You tell me, Bill. You trying to bring all the boys to the yard? <laughs> now, what's cool about this? Cool. Yo, dude! What's shaking? <laughs> Having a bit of a midlife crisis Sooner there, Bill? The Earth will be. It's always moving and shaking. 
When two of the Earth's plates move or crack, the vibrations they make move out from the center of the motion, known as the epicenter, and travel through the Earth, shaking things up. The fault finder is linked to other laboratories around the world, all recording the same earthquake from a different point on the Earth. When we put the information together, we can get an idea of where the earthquake happened. So it takes more than one seismic lab to determine where an earthquake happened. I'll tell you this, it's always shaken. Dude! <laughs> okay, okay, that was funny, I admit it, I laughed at that. <laughs> Best way I've ever heard somebody say dude. Huh? Most earthquakes happen very close to where two of the Earth's crustal plates meet. Yeah, I believe it's the fact that South America and Africa seem to fit together that started the whole continental drift theory. Most of them are located near where two of the Earth's plates bump into each other. This ring of plate edges here is called the Ring of Fire! Not to be confused with the Johnny Cash tune of the same name. So if you live on or around here, you've got a ringside seat! <laughs> you also better make sure your home is insured against earthquake damage. Now let's see, what happens when you click on one of these locations? Oh, pulls up information about the earthquake. It's a lot of reading here. Okay, we're gonna skip past this, it's just information. I thought there was a video in one of these segments, but nope. I'm not gonna go looking for it. So, besides learning about old quakes, we can locate new ones here. We can talk to somebody in Tokyo. Konnichiwa. There have been no earthquakes recorded here in the past two hours. So Godzilla's not attacking there yet. Good to know. Let's see what's up in Auckland. G'day, mate of science. Here in Auckland, we haven't seen any earthquakes in the past few hours. These are all the places we talk to to get information about earthquakes happening. I wonder if these cities actually have earthquake detection centers in them. We have not registered any earthquakes of any significance in the past few hours. I mean, there'd have to be something in each of these countries and the state of California, given the frequency of earthquakes, but I wonder if the detection centers are actually in these cities or are they elsewhere. Oh, my sushi is here. Gotta go. That was some nice line reading there, buddy. So now we know which places will help us in the event of an earthquake, at least as far as detection goes. Okay, what happens when we hit the milkshake button? Mmm, banana smoothie. My earthquake brings all the homes to the ground and they're like, um, uh, I don't know. <laughs> Let's just go in here. by a scream. Is this a part of the lab or a crazy cat lady's house? The fossil lab is where we assemble all of our, well, fossils. Really? I thought it was where you we assembled your mixtapes. What animals looked like by putting their bones back together. It's cool. If you see any loose bones on the floor, those are not uh, leftover snacks from Pavlov, the dog of science. They're also not the remains of my former employees. Don't go getting that idea. Or to identify them, which reminds me of a little song. <laughs> The foot bones connected to the leg bone. The leg bones connected well, to the. Well, that's hardly bone. singing. The bones connected to the. Uh, Bill, no singing in the lab, okay? Just. Uh, that is a good policy to implement. Thank you, Mr. Announcer. On a song. <clears throat> cool. Fossils are cool because they take millions of years to form. Usually, after a plant or animal dies, its body will break down completely. Their family members may do so as well upon learning of their passing. It gets covered quickly with sand or soil or water. Then slowly, the tiny spaces in the bone or wood get replaced by different bits of minerals. And it ends up as a fossil. Now this process takes a long, long time. It's called permineralization. Permineralization can be pretty minerally. It can be pretty permanent. Ha! <laughs> permineralization. What Bill just said reminded me of one of our riddles here, so I think we have another clue. A clue for this riddle. Correct the window! See what I mean? What fossils are. What once was bone, now is rock. Fossils prove that life forms that we've never seen before once existed. And like Sam is suddenly a game show host now. Hmm. Through fossils, we know they existed. Now. What about all that other stuff in the riddle? The sea, or that fish, that old rock band that just keeps on touring? <laughs> huh? 
What do the Rolling Stones have to do with this riddle? Their song is called Beast of Burden, not Beast Who Ate Fish by the Sea and Flew Like a Hawk. <laughs> Got some dinosaur portraits on the wall. Hey, here's a flying dinosaur. It looks like it's eating a fish. This might actually be the answer to this riddle. Let me just make sure. Sam says, yeah, some dinosaurs lived by the water and ate fish. Now they're fossils. But where can we find one? Max won't accept pictures. Oh, we have to go out and find the fossilized skeleton of this dinosaur. I forgot. First, we have to do this. I say as a dinosaur oh. screams in my ear. Just click on a bone from the pit, drag it into position, and put the animal together. It's a bone puzzle. You can put something wild together, like uh, a dinosaur, or an alligator, or uh, a chicken? <laughs> well, probably. Unfortunately, we will only be building one of those things. Just drag in the fossil scanner. Well, bone appetit! <laughs> I'm not going to be eating off the bones, Bill. What are you talking about? Okay, we're putting a skeleton together. This is going to take dedication and patience, and we're done. What are you talking about? I didn't edit anything here. How do we use this thing? Oh, I guess they're going to tell us. Huh? Use the fossil scanner to help you figure out what you got. It's easy. Just move the slider bar next to the left screen, then settle on a creature you think resembles yours. Then you hit the x-ray switch to see its skeleton. If you think it matches, hit the big red button. It's easy. It's fun. And as my boss would say, it's science! You, Sam, are no Bill Nye. Okay, so we just slide... Enough with the screaming dinosaurs already. Here we go. What the? Terrific job on the T-Rex. How do you get here such a all of a sudden? Full display that we're gonna put it out where everyone can see it. You know, hey, you, know, you are not only a great fossil builder, but you are a wonderful audience. <laughs> You have delusions of grandeur, Sam. Seek help immediately. Earthquake! Run! Down to the tectonic bay. Isn't ducking and covering a safer oh, option no. here? Oh, don't worry about those bones. I'm sure that Pavlov, the dog of science, will be able to take care of them. You're worried. Uh oh. 